Hey guys, I'm out here next to my lemon tree and I wanted to show you today how I take care of it. Um, I actually bought this lemon tree from my local nursery called Rockledge Gardens um, in Rockledge, Florida. And um, I just follow their tips for how to care for a citrus tree. Um, I don't have any fruit on it this year. I think maybe next year is going to be my fruiting year. Um, but uh, if you don't know, already know about the citrus greening disease that's going on in the citrus trees in Florida, um, there's these Asian citrus psyllids, which is a spe specific type of bug um, pest that gets on lemon trees, and then it, uh, well, it, it just carries the disease, and then it'll spread to other trees, and um, like really eventually kill the tree, but you can give your tree the best shot if you do um, this witch's brew every two weeks. So I've actually got a calendar reminder to do it every other Thursday, and it's been paying off big time. If you look at all the, like, these are all the new growth that I've had over the past couple months. I've been consistently doing it all summer long every two weeks. And I actually was looking around to find some evidence of the citrus psyllids and couldn't even find it today. So I'll have to insert some, some older damage to show you what it looks like. Um, so yeah, let me show you how I whip up the witch's brew. Um, yeah, so I've already got, let me set the camera down. So I'm just outside, this is like in my front front yard, I've got this old like, uh, you know, uh, master blaster container and I just wrote the, um, I like factored it down to this size and wrote down the recipe. So I've got like the one tablespoon of Captain Jack, Captain Jack's dead bug right here, followed by half a tablespoon of citrus tree nutritional spray growth scripts followed by a quarter tablespoon of Genesis um, which is kind of like a fertilizer for a citrus tree and I already went ahead and filled this up with water so I could film this out here for um, so yeah let's just mix it up and then I'll walk you through how I spray it it's really pretty simple um, but the key when you're spraying it is oops probably over poured that a little bit. The key when you're spraying it is to get really the underside of the leaf. That's where a lot of the pests are going to hang out. Um, and uh, this is just half a tablespoon here. Just going to eyeball it. I mean, using my one tablespoon measure, just eyeballing halfway. And then the Genesis, a quarter tablespoon. So usually what I do to try to, it's a little bit tricky, as you might imagine, to try to understand whether or not you covered every leaf on the tree. Um, so what I do is I, I'll give this a good shake first, and then I basically pick a branch and I just spray it, like every leaf on that branch, and then I move on to the next branch. Um, and that kind of helps me stay f focused and make sure I don't like double cover leaves or miss branches completely. So like you can see right here, I'm just going to grab this one right here and spray it. And I think I got them all on the underside. There is usually a little bit left in the bottle after I do the underside of all the leaves, so I go back and try to just spritz the top also. And there's been some mixed comments about whether you should just pull a citrus tree or like, you know, whether you're doing something ethically wrong by even keeping a citrus tree in your yard in Florida because of the citrus greening. and. Uh, Really, my opinion agrees with a lot of the um, local nurseries. And they say, you know, there's no reason you can't enjoy your tree while you have it. And then when the day comes where the disease is too much for your tree and it's got it, uh, you can always just pull it up at that point. And interestingly enough, I applied last week for um, 
getting some biological control for the Asian citrus psyllid, and that is through the University of Florida. They have a program, I'll put a link to it at the bottom, but you can actually order the wasps. They're like mini wasps that wouldn't hurt a human. And you release them in your yard, and what they do is they lay their eggs on the Asian citrus psyllid, and then the larva will hatch on the on the psyllid and then it'll basically eat it. So it's a biological control of the citrus greening disease for citrus trees by controlling the population of the Asian citrus psyllids. But I haven't heard back from the application. We'll see if I get it or not. I really don't have that many, so it wouldn't be, maybe I'm not ready for it anyway. You can see some of these trees curl right here. Sometimes I uh, try to get your hands in there and uncurl it and spray within the curl and make sure you don't have any buried pests in there. I think this tree is just about done its like summer growth. I All summer long I was seeing these tiny little um, young growths pods at the end of every branch and I'm not even seeing any of these today for the first time in months and I think it's just it means it's coming to the end of its growing season as we're coming into the fall so once we reach the dormant growth stage in winter I'll do some pruning and I'll do another video about that I've never actually pruned this tree it's only two years old so That'll be a learning experience for me and I'll share it with you. Make sure you get all under here. I really have done almost like too good of a job taking care of the pests on this tree. I don't have any pests to show you tonight. I tend to do this in the evening just because that's kind of when I have the free time and and I've, I'm just kind of worried that if I do something in the heat of the summer like right at 9 or 10 a.m. the summer the sun is just gonna bake those whatever I'm spraying on the leaf and potentially cook the leaf more than I want. Um, they do warn against that for neem oil. I haven't seen that warning for Captain Jack's dead bugs or any of these other things, but just figured it was safer to do it later in the day. Or at least away from the sun. There's a curled one right there. You can see some, uh, looks like a little leaf miner damage. Leaf miners, I do get a few on here. Um, let me point out, there was a new one that I saw a little bit ago. Yeah, this is some more leaf miner damage right there. It really doesn't do harm the tree that much. It's a little bit of a nuisance because it destroys some of the leaves, but you don't have to pick the leaf off. This is, just doing this is fine. There is a portion on, oh my goodness. Do you see that? Do you see it? Ah. I don't know what to do. Should I keep spraying? Is it gonna jump on me? <laughs> oh my God, I'm freaking out. I've never seen that on my tree. I wonder if that's what's eating it. There's a couple leaves, I'll show you. There's a couple leaves that are eaten. Um, I need to do some research about that and figure out what it is. But, oh my gosh, I'm scared of that thing.
Oh, right here. Here's the chewed up damage. I'll have to read about whether that is like a praying mantis and is it doing the damage to the tree or the leaves like that? I've never seen this kind of chew. And you can see I'm almost done the bottle. Just gonna kind of spritz the top of the leaves now over the whole tree until the whole bottle's gone. And then we're done. I'll usually also, while I'm doing this, I just take a look around the bottom of the tree and sometimes I'll get mushrooms, especially in this rainy season, and I'll just pull them up. I don't know if they do any harm, but just pull them up. All right, so I think I'm done with the lemon tree maintenance. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll put a link to all the products below. Hope this helps you uh, keep up with your lemon tree.